Welcome everybody, I'm Alexander Linz, head of content of WatchAdvisor.com and today I'm welcoming you from Lucerne, the heart of Switzerland, the Lake Lucerne and as they call him here in Switzerland, the Vierwaldstättersee and the purpose of being here is because I'm not going to show you any novelties today, you know that we're famous for doing this and we always try to bring you those novelties as one of the first to your screens. Today I decided to do something different and with the help of Embassy who is a famous jeweler who is based here in Lucerne, also has a store in Zurich and what I'm going to do is we have chosen some GMT or traveling watches, watches that show you a second zone time and we will compare those watches and show you the differences so you will be able to discover different brands and different executions of such watches. Enjoy what we are going to do right now. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Six watches that do represent watches you would probably wear when you are traveling or when you are someone who is not always at home and you need to change a lot of zone times. Um, the watches you see on the tray here do represent um, all the category of, let's say, UTC, GMT, traveling watches, second zone time, second time zone, whatever you call them. Um, I did a choice by purpose. So one might say, okay, why is there no Rolex GMT? Why is there not uh, uh, a Omega this or uh, whatever? Um, I wanted to show you some different watches because we all know how a, a Rolex GMT looks like an Omega GMT might look, but probably you don't know these watches and they do also do um, give you a second uh, zone time indication when you travel. And it was uh, my intention to get a little bit, let's say, out of the box, look out of the box and show you watches you probably not have seen before. The first watch, let me start with the Tudor GMT Black Bay with that blue and red bezel. Um, a watch that could be an alternative if you are looking for a um, Rolex and you don't get it because it is sold out for the next years or you just don't want to spend so much money or you want to distinguish yourself by wearing a watch that is not so popular on the wrist that could be a nice idea the Tudor is one of my favorites when I saw it last time then we have the Hublot Big Bang Unico GMT ah, you are asking yourself why are the straps uh, not attached because uh, the purpose was of course to show you quickly also this one click system this one click system I will show you the details just right after this and now this is something I'm very proud of thanks to Embassy once again because this is a watch that is not yet on the markets but they were able to organize it from Bulgari from the headquarters this is still not a watch that is available but will be available very soon that's the new world record watch a chronograph watch they uh, introduced during Basel World it they set a new world record in Finnness that's an extremely thin watch uh, features an automatic movement it's a chronograph and of course and because Bulgari said okay we can add another function there's a push piece here if you push it then you will uh, be able to move and advance the hour hand in one hour steps and you will of course have here there is a little display indicated your home time it's set to 12 o'clock the same with the IWC Spitfire time zone the watch is not yet on the market so I'm very happy to be able to show you the watch um, this is an alternative also when you travel very easy to use there is a basal you Pull down, you push down the basil and by pushing down the basil you will be able to manipulate the watch. The watch will not stop, you will not lose the seconds, you will not lose of course the correctly indicated minutes but by pushing down the basil you will be able to move the hour hand and uh, to go forward and backward. The watch is set to Paris summertime here and we will, I will show you in detail just afterwards how the time zone or Spitfire time zone works. And if you say to yourself, okay, I don't need a sports watch, I am more an elegant type, I want a watch that I can wear under my sleeve of the shirt, I want to look at what I want an elegant, I want to invest more money, but I don't want to um, think about um, the time changes and the differences in between time zones, the A, Lange und Söhne, Lange Eins, Zeitzone, time zone watch, is something that is very very interesting 
And if you are a big fan of Breguet, of the Tradition, I love these watches because the watches show the entire technique. Do you see the balance wheel? Everything is brought to the dial. That's like cinema on the wrist. I always say the Tradition of Breguet is a watch I very much enjoy. It's a very technical watch and the same, at the same time it's a very traditional Breguet watch because everything uh, what is typical for Breguet is applied. You have these wonderful engine turned guilloché dials and so on and you see many of uh, Breguet's inventions also in there. But the watch also features two dials and you have the possibility to offset one of the dials when you travel and of course because it's an intelligent watch there is a day and night indication telling you if it's day or night. So the Tudor GMT um, offers the same easy to use uh, technology or invention Rolex uh, offers in all its GMT watches. As you know, Tudor is a sister, the little sister of Rolex. And uh, especially for this uh, GMT Tudor Black Bay with that blue and red basal, they invented an own movement, an automatic movement. That's an in-house movement. It has been conceived and is manufactured from Tudor, so it's not um, an ETA movement, it's nothing they source from outside. And we do also have to name the movement is equipped with a silicon hair spring uh, offering uh, um, very good accuracy and uh, the silicon hair spring of course is anti-magnetic so helps a lot to protect the watch and to keep it very accurate. The watch is, as it is also mentioned on the dial, chronometer, officially chronometer certified by the Swiss COSC, the independent chronometry testing offices here in Switzerland, COSC certified. So now let me quickly show you. The crown is of course protected by screwing it down for more waterproofness. There is a first position, you can wind the watch in case you need to do that. Um, normally you don't because when you wear it, it is an automatic movement. You don't have the need of winding it. So when you travel, the watch is synchronized. It's uh, 1244 here in Lucerne. I am at Embassy in Lucerne. It's 1245 and you can see the little um, red arrow here. This little red arrow points on the basal also at 12. 45, almost 1300. It's not an error, it's, it's a hand, so it's a really a 24 hour hand that is on the dial. And now, if you travel and if, for instance, we go to New York, six hours time difference, time differences, I take an easy destination. Uh, we have daylight saving time in both cities. You see already what I'm doing. You have the possibility to move the hour hand in one hour step. So we go back to New York six hours back, there we go, that's the time in New York. Very easy, then you pull the crown, you screw it, the watch, watch is waterproof and nothing has happened. Of course, the second hand did not stop, of course, the minute hand continued to show the correct time because there's no need of stopping the watch and if you ever get uh, a, a, a GMT UTC second time zone, whatever the watch is called, watch in your hands. When you pull out the crown, the watch stops. The second uh, second stop in the minutes, of course, then would also stop. This is crap. There's no use to buy such a watch because it will not help you. The easy way of functioning, that's how a watch should be. So let's assume we go back now to Lucerne. We turn it, you see, it's very easy. And, uh, yeah. and to synchronize it, you go in the second position and now you will see, if I'm synchronizing, um, you see that the red 24 hour hand is moving with, you see 12 o'clock, so we've indicated 12 o'clock also on the red basal. Now we go back to 11 o'clock and you see that the red second hand is pointing at 11 o'clock. And so this is how you synchronize the watch when you are at home. And then when you travel, I go back to Lucerne, about 12.45 was the time. There we go. And I want to show you something else. That's very good. The, in the, I have to go back in the first position. Here we are. And the date, of course, is always linked. Now we are at 11 o'clock and that's, you have seen, jump to the 23rd. And if you go back, 
the date will go back to the 22nd. So the date is, of course, linked to the main hour hand, to our local time and not to our home time that is pointed with the red snowflake hand, as they call them at Tudor, the snowflake hand. The Hublot Big Bang Unico GMT is based on the Unico chronograph movement that is has been uh, conceived and is manufactured internally by Hublot in the factory in Nyon, close to Geneva. And uh, since the movement is based on a chronograph uh, caliber, you also have those typical push pieces here. Start, you normally use for start, stop and then the other one for reset. In this case, these two push pieces will move forward and backward the our hand. I'm just going to show it to you easily, you see. So this is what you do with the push pieces and the other one move it back. So that's also a fully functional GMT. I set it by purpose to some minutes before 12 o'clock to be able to show you the uh, second error that is here. You see that little point here shows one o'clock on the basal. You have a basal here that shows 12 hours, 9, 10, 11 and 12. And to be able to distinguish if it is day and night, you have this ring inside the watch. It's the one side of the ring is dark and it's indicated night here, night. And the other side of the ring is in a bright color in a metallic look and this is of course day and it's day now, it's 12.45. So the hand indicating the uh, second zone time points at one o'clock and it's day of course. So and if you travel, let's assume we are synchronizing the watch going back to the local time here in Lucerne. Oops, wrong direction. There we go. So assuming now it's one o'clock and as I did just before with the GMT, um, the Tudor GMT, we're traveling to New York. That means we have to go back six hours. So one, two, three, four, five and six. It's seven o'clock in the morning almost in New York, you see. So we have indicated seven o'clock and of course the uh, arrow or the arrow from the 24 hour hand or in this case it's a double 12 hour hand still pointing at one o'clock so you can easily read your home time from the dial without thinking if you have to deduct or add six five four whatever hours so it's very easy to use and if you go back and if you need to change your time zone again so you just use those push pieces that are normally uh, belong to the chronograph movement and I told you it's the Unico movement they transformed the chronograph movement to show the second zone time or the time in a time zone somewhere. So we go back, you see it's again synchronized one o'clock here in Lucerne at Embassy and uh, the watch is again synchronized. So this is a watch I'm very proud of uh, being able to show you already now. When you have been following our work at Watch Advisor on our YouTube channel, you probably have seen the watch already in our coverage of Basel World. We showed you this ultra thin, tremendous, beautifully looking designed uh, Octo Finissimo chronograph. It's a new world record they have achieved with that watch it's a very 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 thin watch look it's incredible and uh, in there in this very thin titanium case you have an automatic chronograph movement also giving you the possibility to indicate a second zone time and what you see is the movement and please do excuse First of all, this red dot here and this scratch, this is not a watch that of course is meant to be sold. This is still a watch out of the Basel World collections. We got it from Bulgari, the watch is not yet in the retail. So please excuse us showing you uh, a watch that is a little bit damaged here. But uh, of course, when you buy the watch, this will not be part of it, of course. So then you see here the peripheral rotor. You see it here and here, there is a rotor and that moves on the outside of the movement. So you have maximum visibility on the movement 
and the rotor is not covering anything and since the attempt of Bulgari was to create the thinnest ever manufactured chronograph movement, the rotor could have by no means covered the entire movement because this would have added thickness and this was not the purpose. So you see that there is, the rotor is on the outside of the movement. There you go, on the outside of the movement. Then here is the place or the area where the rotor is turning and by turning, when you move your hand, it is delivering energy to the barrel and the barrel then is the source where the energy is brought to the movement. So this is a little explanation of that movement and once again please excuse us for this little damage here and the red spot that's not meant to be there but since this is not yet a watch it has been delivered to the retail, I dare to show you the watch. It is one o'clock here in Lucerne at Embassy and when I start the chronograph, tuck, start, stop, here's the start, stop pusher, down there is the reset pusher, of course I will stop it and I will use the reset, Do you see, it jumped back. And the watch also features another push piece that is located here at nine o'clock and now the fantastic thing is and I will show you after I just explained you the dials. You have uh, the running seconds. So you see that the watch is running. The uh, uh, hand is approaching 60 seconds. And down here at 6 o'clock, you have a 30 minutes counter. When you use the chronograph, you can read um, how many minutes you have been using the chronograph. So for all purposes, when you cook eggs, when you want to boil, eggs or you want to make some tea or you need it for spaghetti whatever that's the perfect elegant chronograph and there is one little um, sub dial left this is this one and you see that there is indicated um, there is a 24 hour indication 4 8 12 16 20 and 24 and of course the hand on the dial now points to one o'clock because it is one o'clock here in Lucerne and when you are traveling and you need to readjust the watch because you have been traveling, let's say, as we did with the watches before, to New York, the thing you do is you use the push piece here, you press the button, you correct, there we go, these are the six hours of time difference. There is no date indication, so you don't, need to, you don't need to know if you are at night or day. You just push this push piece as often until you get your six hours of difference. And you see it's indicated we are at 7 o'clock in the morning, New York. And still the time in Lucerne is 1 o'clock. Very easy to use and very clever and very smart and a very beautiful design, by the way. I, I'm always telling the story every decade has its iconic design and I want to say and uh, uh, shout out loud here this decade is the decade of the Bulgari Octo Finissimo they have really invented a new design they dared and this design is really uh, mind-blowing it's a beautiful watch ultra thin and they are breaking each year the record by presenting a new world record in thinness this year it was a chronograph as I just told you with a peripheral rotor and a movement, a completely manufactured movement by Bulgari and the watch features, and this is why we have it in our selection of GMT or second zone time, time zone watches, features also the possibility of indicating your home time when you are traveling. This is the Spitfire time zoner from IWC Schaffhausen that was presented at the SIHH in January. We featured the watch already in the first video we taped early before the SIH. So the watch is a limited series of 250 pieces. The watch is dedicated um, for the adventure. IWC has started with a Spitfire plane and the Spitfire plane will uh, fly around the world. And this is the watch the pilots uh, will wear on their wrists while they are flying the Spitfire once around the world. That's a pretty of an adventure flying and World War II Spitfire round the world. So the Spitfire watch is um, very easy to use in terms of when you are traveling and this is what it was meant to be. It is not, and I have to say this clearly, not the watch that will indicate you a second zone time. The watch is indicating local time 
and but what is very easy to use is the basil and what the basil is doing I will show you right away first of all I want to say you uh, set the watch to Paris time because we are in the Paris time zone here in Luzern and you can see there is a second little spot where it is indicated S like summertime daylight saving time and we are correctly now at the daylight saving time dot on the basil and it is to uh, one one o'clock and 12 minutes here in Lucerne so you can also see this by the 24 hour indication on the picture here so what is now special on a watch um, is that you don't need to unscrew a crown when you want to manipulate or when you want to change the time zone. There is no need to unscrew this wonderful big crown that is so typical for the pilot's watches. The, uh, the big crown comes from the days when the pilots wore, were, wore the, uh, those watches around their um, leather jackets to protect them from heat or no, no not heat but probably cold <laughs> that's the better way and uh, to be able to manipulate the watches with some gloves as I'm wearing them today the big crowns were meant to be on the watches so you could easily manipulate them but you don't need to unscrew anything here the only thing you do is you push down the basil as you can see you push it down and then you can change the settings of the watch. So we're doing the same thing as we do with all the other watches before we are going back to New York and I push down and I go back six hours. You see, very easy, it's seven o'clock. And of course, haha, there we go. Up there we have New York and since there is daylight saving time in both cities, in Lucerne and New York, you will also see that little S on the left side of the New York indication here on the basal that tells you that there is daylight saving time and we have easily changed the time uh, for six hours and you see correctly indicated on your 24 hour scale that it is six o'clock in the morning and of course, uh, seven o'clock in the morning and of course not in the evening. So there's no indication of a second zone time, but the watch is so easy to use. If you're traveling, if you're, if you're a pilot, that would be, I would say the best use for a pilot. If the pilot is sitting in his plane and he's going over the time, different time zones and if he needs to adjust the watch, just by pulling down the basal, Turn it, and I'm now back in Lucerne. Nothing else to do. The seconds do not stop. The hours are still indicated correctly. So that's how it is meant to be. And if you are changing the date, and if you are traveling, and if you go forward, and you will see one interesting thing. And this is what I very much like. The date, of course, is also linked to the mechanism. Now watch. It is the 23rd. So the next watch I'm showing you um, is of course uh, a watch that is in another segment. We are now in the luxury high-end segment. Alain and Söhne, I would compare Alain and Söhne, the quality and the make of Alain and Söhne to a Patek Philippe, of course. So price-wise, we are now, of course, in another league. And the Alain and Söhne Lange 1 Zeitzone Lange 1 Time Zone Watch is a very particular watch. First of all, it has a wonderfully executed movement. A lot of uh, efforts have been done to decorate the watch and you can also see here this has been decorated by hand, of course. And do you see the decorations of the Glashütter Streifenschliff? You see a lot of gold chatons here. They're screwed in those they are screwed, they are not pressed into the main plate. And um, the typical design of the Lange and Söhne three quarter of the three quarter plates. So three quarter of the movement is covered by the main plate. That's a typical A Lange und Söhne design you will see on different of their watches. So you have a main dial that is indicating you the local time if you want and you have a second dial and the second dial is also showing because the watches both dials have been synchronized from me before and both dials are showing the same time what you have here on the on the outer ring of the of the um, dial are the 24 major cities of the 24 uh, time zones we have here on our little earth
the major time zones. There are, of course, more time zones. Some have half hours deviations, a quarter, 15 minutes deviations, but they are not shown here. And the watch is not able to show this. So the watch will show you the 24 major time zones and it is synchronized. There is a little arrow here at the position of five o'clock indicating the city of Berlin. Berlin. Why Berlin? Because we are in the time zone of Berlin. In Paris, we are in the time zone of Paris, of course, but uh, since this is a German watch, they decided to put Berlin instead of Paris. Normally, you should he re read here GMT London, then Paris, and so on, Beirut, and so on, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, the nice thing is um, also that you have a big date indication here. It's wonderful to have a big date indication because these watches offer you the possibility to read the date immediately from the dial without using your reading glasses just in case you need to wear some already and i would assume those who are able to buy such a watch will probably need uh, uh, reading glasses because uh, when you are able to afford such a watch you probably are not young anymore it's pretty expensive this i want to say already now so what happens now if we are traveling we have uh, two push pieces uh, there's one here and there's one here. This push piece, when you push it, will always advance the date. And this push piece, when I push it, will advance this hour, this little clock or little dial, sub-dial. And you can use it then as your home time when you leave the time zone or the zone time where we are in the moment. So watch, we are again assuming to travel to New York as we did with all the other watches before. And you see, every time I push, the watch will move forward. And the only thing I have to do is I have to push as often as we are approaching New York. And this will happen now. We have arrived in New York, there where we first saw uh, Berlin. We now have indicated New York. New York. Berlin has moved up here, Mix has nothing to say, it's just where it's located, but what we have is the fact it's 1.30, 1.30 in Lucerne and of course 7.30 in the morning in New York. If it's morning or evening, we will be able to see here, this little arrow will point at the brighter zone, brighter part of the dial, and so it's indicating day and not night and you will also have the same here there's a little 24 hours indication telling you that the arrow points at the brighter side or the brighter part of this indication so we are it's day the little sub dial here is the running second also to be mentioned and this is the easy way how to use the lange und söhne when you travel so now you read your home time here and your local time here new york very easy 7 30 in the morning and at home 1.30 in the afternoon. Last but not least, a watch I personally very much like because I like the Brugge um, type of tradition. It's called Brugge Tradition, Brugge Tradition GMT and the exact, the exact name of the watch is Brugge Tradition 7067. And if you want to add GMT, you may add GMT. What I like on this watch is that uh, Brugge with the tradition watches are bringing back or have been bringing back a style of pocket watches Brugge has been manufacturing in the time being. Um, you know that Brugge invented the tourbillon in 1795, in 1801 he patented the tourbillon and Brugge was responsible for a lot of inventions in the watches and his uh, Les Montres Souscription, the watches where people needed to already give some money before they could buy them so they were financing Brugge, they had this design and uh, these Montra Souscription, the type of pocket watches, he was bringing really the entire architecture so, the, so everything was visible and it's the same here. You see the balance wheel here, very nice, and you have two dials, there's one Guilloche engine, engine turned dial um, uh, that gives you uh, one time zone and this is a second dial where you can indicate a second time zone, very easily readable and very logical because you have two of them. You can either set this as home time or local time. It's you to decide, or the engine turn, Guilloche dial, it's you decide. So you see parts of the movement of, uh, from the back, and the uh, important thing I wanted to show you here is a 
a power reserve indicator you see here there is a little black area that is thicker and getting thinner thicker and thinner and there is a little nose a little pointer that actually is pointing at almost fully wound so you will see that here is a little pointer and the pointer shows that the watch is almost fully wound it's in hand wound movement so you will have to wind it by using the crown there's no rotor there's nothing that will wind the watch while you're wearing it so the push piece at uh, 11 o'clock here if you have opened it it's uh, a push piece that can be protected for uh, incidentally uh, pushing on it you can screw it and then it is protected if you use the push piece here and if you push you will see that the hand on the guilloche engine the engine turned dial will start to move in one hour steps so if you're traveling to new york as i already explained to you before we have a six hour time difference what you do you push you push you come at seven and something we are a local time here in lucerne is 1 uh, 33 and local time in New York is 7.33 in the morning and easily to see the 24 hours indication that is linked to this dial is still showing you that we are at home in your local time, uh, your home time, sorry, local time is here, home time is here, so your home time is still, it's during the day and not at night. And um, this is now seven o'clock in the morning. Of course, you would know because if you are in New York, you would look out of the window and you would know that you are in the morning and not in the evening, or you would know that it is day and not night. But if you are traveling and uh, if it's getting dark at home and if the day is over, this little hand will move into the dark area and show you that it is already night at home. Very nice, very easy to use. Very clever and still the typical architecture of a Proge tradition showing uh, the entire or let's say the, the, the main parts of the movement like the balance wheel here. You see it oscillating very nice. So whenever you look at your dial, it's like a little film that is uh, shown to you. It's like I always call these watches, these Proge watches, big, big cinema on the wrist. So guys, it's time to say goodbye here from Lucerne in Switzerland, from the Lake of Lucerne. Behind you see the famous chapel bridge that was built in 1365. And I do also need to say thank you very much to Embassy. Five stores here in Lucerne, one store in Zurich. Embassy helped us out. They made it possible that we could film all these watches that you have just seen on your screens and that we were able to compare them. If you go to Embassy, Tell them that you have seen those videos on YouTube, watchadvisor.com, and uh, they will invite you to what they call here a kupli. That's a glass of champagne. Ask for a kupli, you will get your kupli and enjoy the watches at Embassy here in Lucerne. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed what we have been doing. And I'm very glad that we could bring those watches to you. Thank you very much again. If you like what we are doing, as always, you know what I'm saying now, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to like our videos, of course, tell your friends and neighbors what we're doing. And if you have any comments to make, use the comment section just here underneath and I will be more than happy to answer you as always. Bye-bye from Lucerne in Switzerland. Bye, guys.